So after you've done your procedure, my best recommendation is don't smoke anymore. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> Although BM, a high BMI means more fat, more to re, uh, remove, a smaller BMI is also good, you know? Whatever fat you have and how much you want your BBL determines what I do for you. So if you have a low BMI and you want a really large uh, BBL, it's just not gonna happen because there's no fat. So it is important, but it's not everything. You know, ballpark, I would say anywhere from three to four hours, maybe five hours, depending on the extent of liposuction I need to do and how much fat transfer I need to do. So ballpark, I tell my patients three to four hours for a BBL, assuming that's all we're doing. If we're doing something else like a tummy tuck, then it can be a little longer. The answer is no. It's a very small incision for the BBL. Just like the liposuction where the scar is smaller than your pinky nail length, is the same size for the BBL and is placed in a very strategic location so that when you wear your swimsuit, for example, you can't really tell you've had anything done. Can BBL be combined with other procedures? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. In fact, most people that have BBL have something else done. Usually it's liposuction. So a common thing that I get in my practice is 360 liposuction, where we lipo the abdomen, the hips, the waist, the lower back, contour it, take that fat and inject it into the buttock. The answer is the most common error is usually your abdomen. Just by default, that's what we gain the most weight and that's what most people want to remove the fat. So that's where it commonly comes from to uh, get the BBL. Sometimes if someone doesn't have a lot of fat in the abdomen, I just try to get it wherever there's fat in someone that doesn't have a lot of abdominal fat. It can be both. There are risks associated with going with a BBL below the muscles because that's where the blood vessels reside. So you have more prone to get injury or an outcome that is not favorable. If you stay above the muscle, you really avoid a lot of that. So most BBL are done above the muscle. If it's done below, you have to be very careful and get a surgeon that's very skilled like myself to get it done. The simple answer is it depends on what you look like before the BBL. If you don't have a lot of fat and you want fat transfer, we have to get the fat somewhere. So gaining weight may be part of the requirement to do the procedure so that it looks favorable for you. Some women don't need to gain weight because they have enough fat for me to take out and give you a nice BBL. Should you stop smoking before surgery? The answer is yes, yes, and yes. And how long should you stop is the more important question. I think a safe perspective is four weeks prior to your surgery. If you're doing something like facelift, tummy tuck, whatever, you really want to stop smoking four weeks before. My absolute minimum is two weeks. So if you've not quit smoking for minimum two weeks, I really wouldn't touch you. My recommendation is four weeks. So after you've done your procedure, my best recommendation is don't smoke anymore. <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> I mean, you know, you've done this nice work and you've cut a bad habit. Why go back to it? It's a very popular procedure and obviously you've heard some news, you know, with celebrities getting it and everybody seems to be getting BBL. It comes with its own risk. And the most common risk is what we call fat embolism, where the fat can get into the blood vessel and travel to the wrong part of our body. So that's a real risk with BBL and you really have to be cautious with it. Choose your surgeon wisely before you have the BBL. Aside from that, it can go smoothly and usually does most of the time. It's not so much a compression garment, it's a garment that avoids compression of the area that the fat has been transferred. So a lot of garments out there, when you wear it, like if we do a 360 lipo, you get compression of your abdomen, your torso. But the BBL, the buttock area, there's no compression there because we don't want that fat to die. So we don't want any compression. That is all variable depending on the patient. I like to say four to six weeks the longer the better. That just gives the fat time to take and resolve itself before you start putting pressure on it. 
any procedure that we do with fat transfer, there are stages. The initial stage is what you see, this massive swelling, redness that resolves itself over time. But swelling really from a BPL can last several months, even up to a year. So the ideal time to gauge how successful a surgery is, I would say four to six months, no sooner than that. But as you go longer, you see that the results even gets better and better if you combine it with a good workout procedure as well.